Well, good evening and thanks for joining us tonight here on News 20 on GTN. We've got a great show for you tonight. Very touching, inspiring, inspirational, whatever you want to call it. But joining me to my right, we have Karen Robinson, a cancer survivor, diagnosed uh, March 6, 2013, stage 3 breast cancer. Glad you could join us here on the show. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. As we mentioned before, well, we'll throw it in there also that you work for the city of Blackjack. You are the city clerk and um, I've known you for a long time. We have a great relationship, really close friends. So I saw you go through this entire um, scenario from the beginning to where you are now. Mm -hmm. And a uh, fantastic story, very inspiring to me also. So hopefully Thank everybody you. out there will get just a, a piece of the notion of what we're trying to get across today. Thanks. When you hear something like this, what's the first thing that goes through your mind? Fear. That's the first reaction because we all know that cancer kills. So my very first reaction was fear. I'm thankful it didn't last very long, but that was my initial reaction was fear. So who is the, the first person you turn to when you hear something like that? A lot of people will just get in the car, they say, and just they don't want to talk to anybody. Were you like that or were you, I need to talk to my husband, my family, and be mm -hmm. very open about this? Well, initially the very first call I made was to my husband because he knew, as my other family members knew, that I was waiting for the phone call. So he had called me a half hour before I got the news. So as soon as I got off the phone with the doctor, I called him. And after that, I went into one of my coworkers' office and told her because I had to leave. I left City Hall. I didn't tell anyone else. I didn't tell, well, I did tell another coworker, but I didn't tell my family because I wanted to tell them in person. So I left work immediately and I had to drive and I had to talk to God and cry Then all the, the normal responses. We have done through the past 20 years so many shows on cancer survivors. I work with all different cancer action networks throughout the St. Louis area and I've done mm -hmm. it for many years. I've been touched with it in my family. Mm -hmm. Until it touches you personally, I don't think you comprehend. You can be around it like I have been as many times and talked and interviewed, but until it touches you, like I said, you can't comprehend what mm -hmm. it is. That's Can you true. explain maybe that statement back to me? Yeah, it's very true. It, you don't know what it's like until it hits home. Not only that, what I found to be true for myself was e even other diseases or other sicknesses that people go through, I looked at those issues from a different perspective because I had gone through or was going through this myself. When it hits home, you look at life differently you look at other people differently, you look at other circumstances. Uh, it's like you put on another set of glasses. You see everything totally different when it hits home. Do you ask why or did you ask why me? Why is this happening to me? I really didn't. At least I don't think I did. Um, it, when I was on the phone with the doctor and she told me that it was breast cancer, within a matter of a few seconds I said, so where do we go from here? So immediately, it's like I kind of strapped up my boots and said, okay, you told me this, so now what do we do to fix this? So I don't recall ever saying, why me? Because I think I've been raised not to have that mindset. With so much media attention that has been brought to the world of cancer, some things being able to be cured, others not being able to be cured yet. Mm -hmm. But you look at the stati st statistics and the numbers out there, you know, they say that one in every two men in their lifetime are gonna experience cancer, mm -hmm. and women it's like one in every three or every mm -hmm. four. I mean, it's almost like a coin toss. You, mm -hmm. you put f six people in a room, and three of them are gonna have cancer I in their know. lifetime. That's so true. So. When your family first heard the news, mm -hmm. how as someone having cancer, did you want to be approached? Did you want them to cry and feel sorry? Did you want them to be inspirational and part of the team we're going to get through this? I did not want sympathy. I can't stand that. I need strength around me. I gave them the opportunity to respond the first time that way. And quite naturally, they would. I mean, my kids and my mom and my husband and 
they, I mean, my daughters, they cried and I told them, my mom cried. I told them, okay, get it out. Let's get past this because this is not who we are. We're strong women. We're women of God. I'm going to be fine. We're going to get through this and we're going to get through this together. So that was, I don't like the, oh, the woe is me and the sympathy. I, that's, I don't like that mindset. You got to be strong. You got to get through it. You've, you've been faced with this situation. Now what's next? When you started this March 6, 2013, mm -hmm. did you know how long the treatments were going to be or did you not, you just went into it as like an open book? Because a lot of people want yeah. that closure. This is going to be over in a year. It's yeah. going to be two years I have to go through this. This has been under two years now. Yes, I knew that it would be longer than a year, the entire process. I was kind of surprised because I didn't think the whole process would take that long. But it's my understanding my situation was pretty good because I only had to have six chemo treatments. And my chemo started April 5th of 2013 and ended July 19th, 2013. So it was every three weeks I had to have chemo. After the chemo, August 15th is when I had the mastectomy. I chose that route. I had the surgery. And actually, I just completed everything um, June. The end, I'm sorry, July 28th was when I finished everything. I didn't think it was going to take that long. When you look back now, does it seem like it went really quickly? Or is it a time of span in life that just seems like it drug out forever? Well, it didn't go quickly to me, but it didn't, it didn't seem like it was a long, drawn-out process either. Because my treatments, like I said, were every three weeks. And then a month after that, a little less than a month after that, I had the surgery. Then I was on my way to healing. The healing process is what has taken the longest. But all of the other stuff, it wasn't that long to me. What about mindset now of it's over, it's mm -hmm. done, it's behind me? Do you think, do you worry that it could come back? Or is that something that you just place out of your mind and you've got to live your daily life? I actually don't worry about it. I really don't. And I know a lot of cancer survivors do. I've heard women tell me that when they go for a mastectomy, that thought is always there. What if it's back? I honestly don't worry about it. Because like the first time, if it's going to happen, worrying about it is not going to make it any different. So I honestly don't. I have seen you through the past year and a half go through many different stages. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do you handle that as an individual going through, you know, losing hair mm -hmm. and, and all the different things in life that you think you'll never go through? Yeah, yeah. It was, there were some difficult times. I mean, my first chemo treatment was, I believe, April 5th, 2013. They told me the next time I come back, I would not have any hair. I didn't believe them. I, I mean, I know it happens. Um, I was taking vitamins and I'm like, just maybe I have a chance that it won't happen. The Wednesday before my second treatment, I lost all of my hair. I knew it was gonna happen. They told me it was gonna happen. Like I said, I didn't believe them. Um, I cried because somebody even suggested, why don't you just go ahead and shave your hair so you don't go through that? I'm like, absolutely not. If it's gonna happen, I'll let it happen and that Wednesday before my second chemo treatment is I was actually in the mirror on the phone with a friend and I just started touching my hair and as I touched it it came out so the entire conversation I'm touching my hair and it came out and then when my husband came home he took the uh, razor and shaved it off and I, I cried about it but I knew it was going to happen it didn't I, I wasn't prepared for it I still was not prepared to lose my hair so it, I started wearing wigs and I got through it. When you see yourself in that situation mm -hmm. and you're looking in the mirror and as you mentioned, you didn't think it was going to happen, mm -hmm. but it does. Mm -hmm. And now you're standing there face to face looking at yourself. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I mean, what goes through your mind in a, mm -hmm. in a moment like that? I, my heart was broken. I, you know, it was like reality really set in. This is really happening to me. I am a woman diagnosed with breast cancer. And I am a woman going through chemotherapy. I have lost my hair because of chemotherapy. Those realities set in that day. When you see all of the cancer benefits throughout the town, the, the walks, mm -hmm. the events that are held downtown, and you just see 
seas of, of pink. And you I know, know, depending on what cancer it is, uh, what color, mm -hmm. it, it's amazing how many people have survived or are going through it at any one certain mm -hmm. time. What's your word of advice to anybody who might be diagnosed today or who's diagnosed tomorrow or yesterday? Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you even tell somebody? You know, Randy, what I would tell anyone is, first of all, surround yourself with strong, positive people and pray, pray, pray. That's what I did. I prayed every day. I had faith in God that I would come through this. I had no doubt. I never even had a thought that I was going to die even though I didn't really know the severity of it. I didn't know how the chemo was going to affect me. I didn't know if I was going to have to have radiation. I still prayed. I still had faith in God that he would bring me through it. My family members, my friend, friends, my church members, I was surrounded by, by positive people. If anyone is around you and they're talking negative, if they're talking death, if they can't hold their emotions together when they're in your presence, get away from them because it makes it much more difficult for you. I was gonna say, did you find that uh, certain people treated you differently? And if they did, how did that affect your mindset? Well, it, it makes you feel like, well, maybe it is pretty bad. Maybe, maybe I may not make it through. So immediately I got rid of those people or I told them, look, when I'm in your presence, don't do that. I need you to be strong. I'm strong, I'm not worried about it. I need you to have the same mindset or separate yourself from me until I'm through this. As far as being involved in outside events, such as we talked about walks and mm -hmm. organizations like that, what's your mindset on um, talking to other women about what you went through? Mm -hmm. I think that's what's necessary. I think if you've been through it, it is necessary for you to share your story with other people because I had people do the same for me and I tell you, it was so encouraging. The people that had gone through what I was going through were the people that helped me the most because they've been through it. They've experienced it and experience is a great teacher. I know that's an old saying, but it's very true. So the people that had gone through what I was about to go through were the people that I gravitated towards because they helped me the most. So definitely, if you've gone through it, you've been through it, talk to other women about it and participate in the walks. I, I actually participated in the Susan uh, G. Komen walk a year before I was diagnosed, not knowing that the next year it would be me. So I think all that stuff is very important. When you look at um, the way your family really stepped up and mm -hmm. you know, we've been doing some short interviews through the whole process here mm -hmm. of what you went through and you know, you're very emotional about the support that you got from your husband sure. and, and your girls and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, when you look back at that now, could you have made it through it without them? And, and what do you say to a family member who puts so much of themselves into what you're going through? Mm -hmm. I couldn't have made it without them. My family was absolutely amazing from, I mean, from everything from, I could feed myself, but I couldn't prepare meals. This was after the surgery. I couldn't even bathe myself. My family had to bathe me. I couldn't have made it without them. They were absolutely amazing. And you need people around you that can help you. The, the medical profession, they're great. The nurses that come out and help you, they're great. It's nothing like having family or close friends there. I even had friends take me for chemo. Pr primarily my family members took me, but there was at least one treatment that I had to have a friend take me. And it's just great to have people around you. I could not have done it without my family ask you a question as you went through this because as you're at the grocery store as you're you're out shopping you're doing anything walking you run across people who have lost their hair and, mm -hmm. and you can tell they're going through cancer oh yeah at, what do you say or do you say anything mm -hmm. it, was it encouraging and and the reason i asked this is because i saw somebody yesterday mm -hmm. and i thought do i say you know um you know, keep up the good fight. I mean, mm -hmm, do you, mm -hmm. did, was it appreciated if somebody recognized you and said, I had somebody go through the thing, you know, the same thing, keep up, you know, mm -hmm. stay in there, mm -hmm. or do you just ignore it? Mm -hmm. You know, I did have those, a few of those instances in the grocery store. Um, one time a friend, a friend and I were in the grocery store and there was someone in a wheelchair and 
I, that we knew that that person was going through chemo or whatever, so I stopped and I talked to that person. They appreciated it so much, and we even prayed for them. Another time I was in the grocery store and I had on a T-shirt that said I was a, I'm a survivor, and a one lady that worked in the grocery store, she stopped me, she goes, are you a survivor or someone you know? And I told her it was me, and we hugged and we talked. You, you thought we were best friends, but you build this relationship with other survivors. So I think it's great to stop and say something to those people that you think may be going through it. They, they appreciate it, I did. Yeah, I, you want to say something encouraging and uplifting, sure. but sometimes people don't want to think about it. Maybe it was a bad day for them, and, uh -huh. they, and it's, it's just a distraction for uh -huh. them. And so that was my mindset, because yeah. I know everybody goes through it. You mm -hmm. have children mm -hmm. who, you know, look, and they don't know what's going on, mm -hmm. you know. So as a parent, what do you say to your child? Do you explain what's going on mm -hmm. and maybe approach the person or I mean did you have any strange look, looks you know because mm -hmm. a, a child they don't know mm -hmm. what's going on not that I know of if if a child looked at me strange it was behind my back I, I didn't see anyone look at me strange I did there were times you could tell that I was going through chemo because I wore wigs for the most time but sometimes I just wear a cap, a pink cap or something, because I didn't want, I didn't feel like putting a wig on that day. I just didn't care. I mean, I lost all of my hair. I didn't even have eyebrows. Eyebrows, eyelashes, I was hairless. So there, when people look that way, you can tell. And when I was going through it myself, I recognized it even more because I was going through it, you know? So you can tell when somebody's going through something, but I never got any weird stares that I saw. I mean, I I don't even know how to broach this question because it's a very delicate question. Sure. I don't want to offend, not you, because I know I won't offend you, but I don't want to offend anybody <laughs> out there. But, you know, so many people are so worried about um, what they look like. Uh -huh. You know, they're so wor more worried about what they look like than actually what they are about, like uh -huh. substance of them. When something like this happens, all that is gone. It's substance, mm -hmm. you know, the, the nice hairdo, the, that's all gone. Mm -hmm. it's, it's you. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a raw you. Yeah, absolutely. Did that, is that kind of what happened? I mean, you become, it's more, I don't even know how to say it. It's more, it's you. It's yeah. just, yeah. It, it, and there's that no is, outside influence. Right, that's absolutely true. You, it's like you're naked, you know. You, you have nothing on the outside to enhance your outer beauty. It's just rare. It's just you. It is what it is. And I got to that point where I just accepted that. I mean, I have several pictures smiling where I'm completely bald. You know, I embraced the moment because I had life. I was still here. So you, you tend to focus on the more real things in life, which is life itself, not the outside appearances. And that's where I was going with that question. I would say, what would be your advice to someone who is not maybe experiencing in life that raw themselves mm -hmm. because that's what makes a person genuine sure. that's what makes I mean, I mean you can just spot those people yeah. out there the ones that you know that are just self-confident with themselves mm -hmm. and they're just a, a magnetic person mm -hmm. you know i heard so many times when i lost my hair you are not your hair you know and that became real to me because who doesn't, I mean, everybody likes hair, you know, you're, you're accustomed to hair. But I heard that so many times. You are not your hair. You accept and you embrace who you are today. Because tomorrow, you don't know what's going to happen. With every chemo treatment, you don't know how your body's going to respond to that. You don't know how you're going to feel. You don't know if you're going to be able to eat. You don't know if you're going to be puking all over the place. So you embrace every day as it comes. And you just thank God that the next day is better than the one before. Everybody experiences chemotherapy and radiation and the whole process a little differently. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it is, like you mentioned, mindset, mm -hmm. and I'm going to make it through this. But were there hard days? I mean, were there days where you just didn't feel like getting up? You were yeah. throwing up. And I mean, yeah. walk us through that, because as we talk, it all sounds peachy and rosy that it was a year and a half and you made it. But mm -hmm. there were some tough times, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. After my, uh, my chemo treatments were on Fridays. So I was able, I was really scheduled off on the Monday after chemo. 
but I always come to work because I felt good enough to come to work, but I could never stay all day. I had to go because I was tired. The chemo drains you. You have no energy, you have no strength. So needless to say, the Saturday and the Sunday after, I kind of laid around. I'm very thankful and very fortunate that I didn't have the vomiting. I didn't go through that. The first treatment, I did feel a little bit of it, but it never really happened. And I'm really, really grateful for that because that was one of my concerns. But after every treatment, you never know how your body is going to respond. My first three treatments were the same, and then my last three treatments were the same. When I had my fourth treatment, which was the first of the second series, it threw me for a loop. It, it affected me differently. I experienced neuropathy, which is a numbness in the fingers and in the toes and the extremities. And another thing I experienced, and the doctor told me that I could experience sharp shooting pain. I experienced sharp shooting pain in my ear, and it was horrible. So that, after that fourth treatment, that Monday, I stayed home. I could not get out of bed. I was in so much pain that Monday after that fourth treatment, but like I said, every treatment could be different. You don't know how it's gonna affect you. So you take one treatment at a time. The fifth and sixth treatment was better because I explained to the doctor what I experienced. So he told me for that reason only, he would decrease the dosage just a little bit. And he did. So fifth and sixth treatment were much better than the fourth treatment. But there were some days that I didn't wanna be bothered. I could never stay at work the full Monday afterwards because I was just too tired. I just had to lay around and try and get some strength. How important was it for you to be around other people, to come to work, mm -hmm. which for you know most people, including myself, is you know so much of your identity. Yeah. Um, did it just help the healing process mm -hmm. to know that you were doing something productive and mm -hmm. just being back in your regimen? Yes, it did, because it made me feel normal, as normal as I could, considering what I was going through, even at home. I wanted to get up and do things that I would normally do. Of course, my family kind of put a screeching halt to that. But it's very important to do things to try and make you feel normal again. You know, and coming back to work sometimes did that. And like I said, doing things at home and doing things with my family, it helps you to feel normal. Unfortunately, it takes in life sometimes an event like this or a you know, and the, a, a death, or I, 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 just something tragic mm -hmm. to make somebody really stop, smell the roses, think about life, think about it, really what it means. Has it opened your eyes to the time you spend husband, grandkids, daughters, just change life? Mm -hmm. It has. It makes you appreciate life more. You hear that all the time. When, you, when somebody loses a loved one, it makes you appreciate the loved ones that you still have. It's absolutely true. You appreciate life more. You appreciate your family members more. And the other thing it's done for me is it's changed the way I eat because I appreciate my health more. So I eat different. I, I, eat, I ate pretty healthy before, but now I'm, I eat a whole lot different because I appreciate my body. I appreciate life, and I want to do what's necessary to live. For anybody who has just joined us about halfway through the show, Karen Robinson, cancer survivor, was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer on March 6th of 2013. Glad to say now the whole process is over. Um, back, to, back to normal. Yes, back to normal. After chemo, after mastectomy, I had, I had what they call the tram, which is where they take uh, skin and muscle and tissue from my stomach to create a breast. I didn't want to go through the silicone. I, I, I've heard horror stories about that. And I chose to use my own body to have my breast reconstructed. So I had to have the plastic surgery. It was 10 hours long, very well worth it. In my opinion, I had my last appointment with the plastic surgeon about two weeks ago. I was able to say goodbye to him. Um, don't ever want to have to see him again. Um, everything went very well. He was amazing. I mean, my, my, I'm cut from side to side but I have a, a reconstructed breast that I don't have to worry about cancer coming into again. I feel great. He's very pleased with all the procedures, so I'm all the way through it. We talked earlier about the hair being, you know, the identity mm -hmm. uh, for a female, you know, breast are a, a part of identity for a yes. woman. Did the loss of that change mm -hmm. 
any, you know, I mean, I'm not a woman, so I don't, you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> That's a, a, very it's good a crazy question. question for a man to ask a woman, yeah. but did you feel like you lost some of your identity as a woman uh -huh. losing your breast? That is a very good question. And that was a question that came up before I decided to do the mastec mastectomy. And I absolutely don't because once again, just like hair, I'm not my hair, I'm not my breast and I still have two. So it absolutely, I didn't feel any less of a woman because I have a, had a mastectomy, I still feel whole. So no, it did not change my mindset of who I am at all. If someone out there has not listened to what you have gone through and mm -hmm. see where you're at now and the mindset you're at now and have been inspired by if she can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what else we can do in terms of putting out a, a, a personal story, but I want to give you an opportunity to, you know, kind of look at the camera mm -hmm. and tell somebody who might be sitting on their couch right now going through exactly what you went through mm -hmm. about keeping their head up and just mm -hmm. being positive. What would you want to say to them? I would tell them, you know, the initial diagnosis, it is heart wrenching. It is sad and it is scary, but you can make it. You can get through this. Just surround yourself with positive people. Do your research on the doctors. I did my research. I didn't just go with the first doctor because I had to have three. I did my research on all three and I made sure I chose a doctor that I was comfortable with. Pray, read positive material, keep your head up. You can get through this. You have to stay positive. You have to keep your mind on positive things and surround yourself with positive people because if you don't, the whole situation can take you under because it is scary. And, and, and please don't even think you're going to die. Don't let those words or those thoughts even come to your mind. You're not going to die. You're going to make it. And last question. I know we talked earlier about you being thankful for your family. Here's an opportunity publicly that will be on record forever <laughs> to um, say whatever you want to your family and friends. I just want to tell my family how much I love them. And I know how much they love me because they showed me through this process. They showed me before, but going through this whole situation, my family was 100 and then some. So to my husband, to my daughters, my mom, my son-in-law, my friends, thank you, thank you, thank you. I could not have done it without you. Even to my grandsons, because they brought me so much joy. And everybody, they were just so supportive. So to all of them, I love you. Words can't describe how much I love you. And thank you for being there for me. Well, Karen, we appreciate you spending your um, time with us and really being open about your story. I think it's going to help a lot of people My pleasure. realize what they're going through and, and make it through. Sure. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Once again, Karen Robinson, a stage three breast cancer survivor, the city clerk for the city of Blackjack. Thanks again. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for watching tonight. We appreciate your time. We'll see you tomorrow night right here on News 20 on GTN. Have a great evening. After a car accident, Linda Davis needed CPR. Bill Hamilton needed temporary shelter when a fire destroyed his home. During an operation, Haley Reynolds needed a blood transfusion. Excuse me, may I go into that room, Thank you for giving me blood. Thank you for giving me shelter. Thank you for saving my life. Support the Red Cross and change a life, starting with your own. After a car accident, Linda Davis needed CPR. Bill Hamilton needed temporary shelter when a fire destroyed his home. During an operation, Haley Reynolds needed a blood transfusion. Excuse me, may I go into that room, please? 
Thank you for giving me blood. Thank you for giving me shelter. Thank you for saving my life. Support the Red Cross and change a life, starting with your own.